Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Oh my God, Baidu no longer accepts Bitcoin. Holy moly, China bans Bitcoin? How will we survive? Shriek the mainstream media. Well, in fact, Baidu, the eBay of China, no longer accepts Bitcoin, but it was only ever one of Baidu's many subsidiaries, which accepted Bitcoin, and that was just for one Samsung product for several weeks. And in those weeks, only 1.37 Bitcoin were ever sent to Baidu. Look here. This is their wallet. See that? 627.83 pounds. China also announced a ban on financial firms transacting in Bitcoin. The government will treat Bitcoin not as a currency, but as a commodity. Duh. And as such, individuals and companies are free to set up Bitcoin exchanges and transact in Bitcoin. The government warns, however, that they are on their own to try to move as much of that worthless yuan out of the country as they possibly can. Imagine that. The government will not take on the risks of individuals and corporations. How indeed will we survive, Stacey? Yes, Max. Well, when this announcement came from China, of course, the price of Bitcoin did plummet quite a bit on the exchanges. And, but it's now back up again. But I want to look at that headline for a moment. China bans financial companies from Bitcoin transactions. So the central banks of the public, however, was free to transact in them. They just wouldn't allow the banks there to transact in them. This got a lot of attention, but at the same time, which went completely unnoticed other than by CNBC on this article here, Bitcoin recognized by Germany as private money. Bitcoin is not classified as e-money or a foreign currency, the finance ministry said in a statement, but is rather a financial instrument under German banking rules. It is more akin to private money that can be used in multilateral clearing circles, the ministry said. This is quite remarkable, of course, because of the importance and significance of Germany in Europe. And we should have competition in the production of money. I have long been a proponent of Frederick August von Hayek's scheme to denationalize money. Bitcoin's our first step in this direction, said Frank Schaffler, a member of the German Parliament's Finance Committee who has pushed for legal classification of Bitcoins. Bitcoin as a commodity, yes, that's true. That's what we've been saying all along. It's a precious number, just like uh, gold is a precious metal. And you have monetary metals, like gold, that are used as money and have over thousands of years. As we enter the next period of our life here on planet Earth, humans will switch from the monetary metal of gold to the monetary number numeralization of Bitcoin, which is a precious number. There are 21 million of these precious numbers to be mined in total, and they are the monetary num numeracy that will carry us into the 21st century. So China is correct, and the Chinese people are correct. If they ever want to preserve their wealth, they have gold, silver, and Bitcoin to do so. Now, back to the story about Germany accepting it as private money. So CNBC went on to interview Kathleen Brooks, a research director at Forex.com, and she told CNBC, I think it is interesting that Germany has gone ahead and given legal status to the Bitcoin as it could become an alternative to the euro if the single currency ever ceased to exist. If the euro does go belly up, the German authorities could potentially still collect tax if everyone started using Bitcoin. That's a good example of German forward thinking. Well, the Germans appreciate the engineering behind Bitcoin. The Germans appreciate that the IMF is bankrupt and that if the euro were ever to encounter some existential crisis, the IMF is not going to bail out the euro, but Bitcoin could potentially bail out the euro. And they talk about Bitcoin being able to extinguish debt. This is generally the terms used by the Austrian School of Economics that talk about gold as the only debt extinguisher that is uh, worthy of the name. And now we have Bitcoin. So the only thing we don't have is the majority of the Austrian economic school uh, adopting or accepting Bitcoin for what it is. Uh, and we, we, but they will. They will fall like dominoes one by one. They'll all come over to this side of the uh, debate. Now, Citigroup also this past week, while the world's media was paying attention to the China story, Citigroup also said that reserve managers may be starting to look at Bitcoin as well, and that it would be better actually than the SDR, for example, you know, Jim Rickard's theory that will fold over all of global debts into an SDR. Well, this could be better, he said, because it's no individual currency. It's just uh, of the re representative nation states as a separate currency on its own like the SDR was originally designed to be a trade currency. Well, he said 
the, the Citigroup analyst said that it wouldn't be something that reserve managers would move into first, but their, their incentive is not to be the last. And if they start looking at Bitcoin, then it would be uh, put the U.S. dollar in jeopardy. Yeah, right. It does. It, it, it will extinct. It, it will kill the U.S. dollar. That's without a, a question. The question is, will it replace the special drawing right as terms in terms of settling international debt obligations as the currency crisis and currency wars continue? I think Jim Rickards, who you mentioned, who wrote the book Currency Wars, Bitcoin is not on his radar. He doesn't understand that this is actually a superior mechanism for a currency war uh, enabler uh, than the special drawing right, his, his money of the IMF that he talks about as being the go-to currency as you have a recalibration of the global currency grid. I think he's going to be wrong. I think Bitcoin's going to be the go-to currency. The SDR will end up just being another uh, over-leveraged pile of junk that is useless. And, uh, but, you know, I think Jim Rickards will also come over to this way of thinking eventually. Well, I think the interesting thing here is not to look at the price. It could be $100, it could be $50, it could be $1,000, it could be $5,000. The interesting thing is the debate and the discussion happening. And this is only less than four years after it was created, Le less than four years after Satoshi Nakamoto spread this idea out into the world. And it's up at the level of Federal Reserve Bank, of the People's Bank of China. These are discussions happening at that level across a banking analyst now looking at ways that this could be used, what, what it actually means, what Bitcoin actually means. And I'm going to take us to this next headline here. This is quite simply the biggest endorsement that Bitcoin has ever received. This is according to Business Insider, who are very much against Bitcoin previously, and now they're big cheerleaders for it. David Wu, FX and rate strategist at Bank of America Merrill Lynch said, we believe Bitcoin can become a major means of payment for e-commerce and may emerge as a serious competitor to traditional money transfer providers. As a medium of exchange, Bitcoin has clear potential for growth in our view. And with that, he provides this chart which compares it to Western Union. As you see, blue is the Western Union and red is Bitcoin. And if you notice, Western Union's uh, income was down 20% in the third quarter this year uh, when they had to reduce their rate, their transfer fees. Yeah, well, David Wu at um, Merrill Lynch, uh, Bank of America, clearly copying my work. I mean, he's almost quoting me verbatim. He's yeah. making a reference to silver, which I have done already. And his price target is $1,300 for Bitcoin. That's my price target was recently raised to $1,500 and then $1,700 based on Ron Paul's endorsement of Bitcoin. So Merrill Lynch is trying to get into the Max Kaiser business. Well, I, don't, I don't besmirch him for doing so. It's a great business to be in. That's why so many TV shows mimic this show. So many investment banks mimic what we do. That's why Business Insider has now come totally around and do what we do all the time. Henry Blodgett now mimics us. Joe Wiesenthal mimics us. Pretty much we're the market in Bitcoin around the world. And that's the way it should be because our track record and our history go back to virtual currencies. Okay, well, we were the first talking about it for two years, but let's look at exactly what he says, what the quote is from David Wu regarding what the valuation of Bitcoin and why he thinks it should be worth $1,300 and why it could be worth more in the future. And this is where he references something that you've brought up here on the Kaiser Report quite a while ago. Our fair value analysis suggests that to justify the current Bitcoin valuation, it will need to, one, account for at least 10% of all global e-commerce B2C transactions, business to consumers, to become one of the top three players in the money transfer industry, and three, acquire a store of value reputation close to silver. So this is where you come in, Max. This is what you were comparing it to silver. Right now, it, it reached a $10 billion valuation. Uh, silver is at about $20 billion now. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a straight ripoff of everything I've said, everything we've said on the show. And the Wall Street game is to come up with a target, $1,300 in this case, for Merrill Lynch Bank of America. They are, then will raise that target, uh, and according to their, they want to become the X, as it's called on Wall Street, when the, the top analyst on the street, according to the institutional investor or some other, you know, reputable or in, irreputable, uh, <laughs> you know, analysis will look at one or two firms that are the price maker, market maker. The, Merrill Lynch wants to be the biggest player in this. I don't blame them of course. Okay, well, you also brought up Ron Paul. So let's talk about what Ron Paul said. Everybody knows that Ron Paul said, Ron Paul, Bitcoin could destroy the dollar. We know that, that he said that. But there was an interesting point made in the articles talking about him saying this, and I want to call upon that. Even economists who embrace the power of central banks, like University of Michigan professor Miles Kimball, recognize the currency's potential. Bitcoin really shows governments are behind the curve, Kimball said. It demonstrates there's a demand 
for an electronic equivalent of cash. So here we are in this new era where the people wanted something. It was not provided by the too big to fail banks who were merged and connected and wrapped around government. They protect each other's monopoly. The banks protect the government's monopoly. The government protects the bank's monopoly. They were not willing to provide the services that the consumer demanded, the people demanded in a globalized world. The people themselves came up with this currency, which is much better than anything that the governments themselves have imposed upon us. And we see that based on their response, that they're actually issuing white papers themselves about what Bitcoin is and what it could be. Well, it, it, this is the first virtual currency, a cryptocurrency, that made it through the government gatekeepers. Keep in mind that this goes back almost 20 years now, when virtual currencies were first invented, thanks to my technologies. <laughs> so this, this cryptocurrency has made it through the government gatekeepers. But they'll come after it, like they came after file sharing and Napster and Aaron Schwartz and uh, all the, 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 the folks are there to take it down. But it will triumph, especially when Bitcoin marries with Pirate Bay, and therefore the MPAA, the RIAA are going to go finally out of completely out of business. And this is really a fight that I've been fighting for 20 years. So it's great to see this chapter now is a winning chapter. Well, you know, many people argue against Bitcoin, saying, "Well, you have to pay your taxes." We we did see a police chief in Kentucky recently start accepting his payment in Bitcoin, but first. The, the town is paying his federal and state and local taxes and then paying him in Bitcoin the rest that he then doesn't owe U.S. dollar taxes. And, but finally, I want to uh, look at this final bit about this, the future of what these digital currencies and cryptocurrencies hold for us. Bitcoin is hardly the first attempt at a digital currency that operates outside of state boundaries. eBay's PayPal plans to launch a digital interplanetary payment system. There's also growing support for a concept called seasteading, floating cities on international waters where business and innovation aren't held back by laws. Yeah, seasteading is a national application for Bitcoin to create your own sovereignty. And yeah, pay tax to your seastead. Taxes are okay and pay whatever you think makes sense. But any current government tax demands are ludicrous because they support an, uh, a military that's out of control and does nothing good for anybody. Okay, well, we're out of time, 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 time to go. Okay, well, I have to go get some of those intergalactic currency units because I'm heading to Andromeda Galaxy later. <laughs> Makes sense. Stay tuned for the second half. A whole lot more. <laughs> Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Dr. Christos Lajos, CFO of the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. Christos, welcome to the Kaiser Report. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be on the show. All right, fantastic. Uh, now, your university is the first in the world to accept Bitcoin. Um, what, tell us about it. Yeah, uh, actually the University of Nicosia is an educational conglomerate, I would say. The, the University of uh, Nicosia is a conglomerate. It's a conglomerate because we have, apart from the university, we have a partnership with St. George's University of London. Uh, we have a medical school in Nicosia. We have colleges throughout all cities of Cyprus. We How have many students? 8,500 students. And okay. We, and we have many campuses all over Europe and 2,000 students in online programs from all over the world. And you're the CFO, yeah. the Chief Financial Officer, yeah. and you recognize an opportunity in Bitcoin. Uh, is this part of what happened when there was uh, a bail-in. Going back to earlier this year, remember, there was a huge bail-in, there was a confiscation of people's bank accounts. Is this what the bell rang and suddenly Bitcoin became something to do? Actually, it has nothing to do with the bailout and the crisis. We have been receiving requests from all over the world, from students in Africa, Asia, even America, who attend their university courses from their own countries, and especially from students from under bank regions of the world, who wanted to pay us in Bitcoin in the last couple of months. So we examined this issue, we uh, studied it, and we came up with the conclusion that paying through Bitcoins is an excellent payment uh, method for the students, cheapless, quicker, safer. Uh, and we decided to adopt it because it has uh, tremendous advantages over the current, uh, the existing uh, payment through fiat currencies. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> you also offer degrees in cryptocurrencies, correct? In actually, it's a master's of science in digital currencies. How the uh, digital currencies will affect businesses, regulators, bankers, accountants, lawyers, 
uh, merchants, consumers. It's not uh, actually a course in crypto cryptography. It's a course about the public at large and the businesses at large. How will this internet of money affect our everyday life? This is what we want to study in this uh, master's program. Okay, now one of the uh, questions people have about using Bitcoin in a practical sense is the large volatility. Mm -hmm. You see um, price movements from in, in hundreds of in dollars uh, in a day. As a CFO, a chief financial officer of a major university, uh, what are your thoughts there? Is that a problem or how do you address that? Yeah. Actually, uh, Bitcoin as uh, all other currencies can be used either as a means of exchange or as a store of value, as an investment. Uh, as a university, we would be using uh, Bitcoin as a form of exchange. It's an excellent form of exchange. As far as the store of value of investment is concerned, we will not be undertaking any risks. That is, we will be accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment and converting them to euros effectively. For example, if a student from Kenya wants to pay 1,000 euros and at the point of payment, the, the rate is 200 uh, euros to a, a Bitcoin, he will send us over five Bitcoins and immediately we convert it to 1,000. If the rate is 500, he will send over two, two Bitcoins and immediately we'll convert it to 1,000 euros. Right, so uh, your university might use a service like BitPay, for example, and they can convert any currency using the Bitcoin as a yep. transfer mechanism and then into the local currency, yep. really in the same transaction, you're taking no currency risk whatsoever. No, no. And an interesting point now, if you have students coming from Kenya mm -hmm. and, you're, and, and countries where the um, capita uh, per resident uh, is very, very low, um, if they're using Bitcoin, which is a much cheaper way to send money and use money, is it, is it, does it make a difference in terms of now suddenly there are more people who can get an education because of the cost uh, effectiveness of a Bitcoin? In other words, is it having an effect on the, the number of people now who can actually seek an education due to the cost uh, savings from a Bitcoin? Yeah, actually, we are uh, launching a special uh, uh, scholarship program for students in uh, poor countries. It's called uh, UNICAF, University of Nicosia uh, Fund, that we will be offering special scholarships to students from poor uh, countries and also giving them the opportunity to pay through Bitcoin, which will make their studies even more cheaper, more attractive. Right. So here's another use of Bitcoin, which, as far as I know, has never been discussed. It's lowering the barrier to entry for higher education yeah. for millions of people due to its cost efficient efficiencies. And this, of course, will then mean a lot more educational opportunities all over the world. And as your university in Cyprus, I take it, would be the first to do this anywhere in the world. But the more would follow, I would think. Yes, actually, that's, I, be, I believe that uh, behind, uh, behind all this worldwide media attention is the fact that uh, you have pointed out, uh, Max, that uh, uh, it's an initiative that will make uh, uh, education more attractive to poor students all over the world. I believe it's one of uh, the uh, most att attractive advantages of Bitcoin. All right, now let's talk about Cyprus because Bitcoin was trending higher over a number of years and people were looking at this thing as a curiosity more than anything else. And then suddenly there was a huge crisis in Cyprus. The price spiked from 40 to 260. And people realize that, way, hey, this is really a way for folks that are being abused by the banking system to preserve their wealth, to escape the abuse of the banking system. You were in Cyprus at the time. What was the feeling on the street? Was, was, was it really, because from the outside, we, we have the impression that it was spread like wildfire. Suddenly, Bitcoin emerged and, and, and it was talked about immensely. Is that true or what was really going on? Yeah. Actually, at that time, back in uh, March and April of this year, when we had the bail-in, uh, people uh, in the streets didn't really know about, uh, about Bitcoin. Uh, actually, uh, everything that was happening uh, around Bitcoin at that time was uh, mainly from uh, Bitcoiners in the community outside Cyprus. Only a few people knew about, about Bitcoin, and uh, I believe that, uh, that uh, the price increase and then uh, the crash uh, in the price of Bitcoin uh, went unnoticed in Cyprus, I would say. Okay, so uh, more, uh, more activity really outside of Cyprus than, than inside Cyprus itself. Yeah. But nevertheless, it did kickstart a uh, tremendous move uh, from the double digits to the triple digits and now the quadruple digits. When you said earlier that it's both a means of uh, payment and also a store of value, um, let's talk about the store of value for a second because some are estimating that you could look at a Bitcoin as you would a precious stone, like a diamond, and it could 
be uh, worth a million dollars per Bitcoin. Even Hugh Hendry, who's a respected uh, hedge fund manager here in London, recently has said that Bitcoin could be worth a million dollars per Bitcoin. Ron Paul, a famous politician in America, has come out recently and said that he thinks that Bitcoin is the killer of the US dollar. And we'll get to that for, in a second. But what do you think about this idea that the price could trade up to you know a million dollars per Bitcoin? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. As I said, as a university, as an institution, we uh, wanted to do a very serious study about Bitcoin, about uh, the, the advantages, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, we have decided to accept it as a means of exchange. Uh, we are not taking any position as a university uh, about uh, the potential of, uh, of Bitcoin as a store of value. Uh, I have, of course, my own personal uh, opinion about that, but... Uh, and what uh, is your personal opinion <laughs> about that? I believe that there is uh, a lot of potential for Bitcoin to become... Uh, uh, a superb store of wealth, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, let's circle back then to this question about what Ron Paul was saying recently. Ron Paul, I think he's a pretty well-known politician around the world, really, because he's been uh, out front in criticizing the Federal Reserve Bank in America, uh, which is an analogous to the European Central Bank, and the European Central Bank, of course, has a direct impact on what happens in Cyprus and other peripheral countries uh, such as Greece. And these central banks, whether it's the Bank of England or Bank of Japan, they're all really coordinating under the master central bank, the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland. And uh, Ron Paul has been critical of this entire central bank centralized monetary authority that seems to favor one element in society, that is those who have access to money at 0% interest rates for speculation, while penalizing workers and savers. But the linchpin of this entire global central bank system is the US dollar as reserve currency. As a CFO of a major university, your thoughts on can the US dollar continue this role as world reserve currency? Uh, and uh, is it good or is it bad? And, and can Bitcoin challenge that role? I believe there is a lot of logic in uh, what you have outlined right now. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the dollar will continue to, to play the role that uh, it's playing currently, but uh, it will have to face, uh, and it will face a lot of challenge from Bitcoin, I can assure you that. Okay, so basically what I'm getting so far is that you're very happy that Bitcoin has enabled your university to get more students at a better price and, 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 and expedite the, the whole educational process. And that's the main emphasis behind supporting Bitcoin. That's true. However, uh, we have uh, much more ambition uh, as far as Bitcoin is concerned. We want through this proposal that we have made to the Cyprus government to convert Cyprus into a hub, a worldwide hub for uh, Bitcoin uh, trading, uh, processing and banking. And we have made the, uh, specific proposals to the government as to how we can achieve that. You know, as a country, we don't have a lot of export capabilities. We have tourism, we have private universities, but we don't really export anything. However, we have a, a once in a lifetime opportunity now with Bitcoin to convert the Cypriot economy into a hub for worldwide trading, pay, payment systems, banking, based on Bitcoin. Let me get this straight. So you're saying that you are petitioning the government to allow for Cyprus to become a global hub of Bitcoin activity as, as, uh, and take the lead position. So while other countries are thinking about it and trying to examine it, like the US or the UK, they're not sure exactly what it is and there's a lot of lobbying efforts from the banking industry really against it because it's competition. Cyprus is now, you're lobbying the government, take a position, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We want to be a world leader and we want the business. We're open for business for Bitcoin. Is that the message, that's Cyprus? It, that's it, we want to make, uh, make Cyprus the center of the world as far as Bitcoin trading, processing, and banking is concerned. Uh, do we have about a minute left? Can you describe some of those initiatives? Yeah, for, uh, for example, the government can make a public statement that uh, Bitcoin businesses are very welcome in Cyprus. Uh, we can have uh, Bitcoin being traded in the official Cyprus Stock Exchange. Uh, it will be the first official The Bitcoin state. will be traded on the Cyprus Stock Exchange. This is one of our that's, proposals. That's a proposal. Yeah, uh, imagine now having uh, an authorized stock exchange under the auspices of the government, uh, having uh, Bitcoin uh, the trading. It will attract trading from all over the world. Uh, we will have uh, uh, related uh, businesses and services being uh, developed. We will create thousands of, of new jobs. 
the opportunity is great. So and like Singapore is the Asian hub for banking and London is certainly a hub in Europe for banking. Cyprus could be a Bitcoin hub uh, for the globe in Bitcoin trading and, and, yep. and related services. That's your, that's your hope, that's your thought. Yep. Yep. The government so far, we have about 20 seconds. The government so far, what has been their response? Uh, the, the Minister of Finance has been uh, asked about this in, uh, from worldwide channels uh, in the last couple of days. And uh, uh, he said that uh, they are very positive and uh, they will uh, study this very carefully in the next uh, coming days. All right, fantastic. Well, we wish you luck. I think one country will be the big winner. It could be Cyprus. Uh, it could be. We want it to be, and we will make every effort. Well, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Christos Vlachos of the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all. by CNBC on this article here, Bitcoin recognized by Germany as private money. Bitcoin is not classified as e-money or a foreign currency, the finance ministry said in a statement, but is rather a financial instrument under German banking rules. It is more akin to private money that can be used in multilateral clearing circles, the ministry said. This is quite remarkable, of course, because of the importance and significance of Germany in Europe and we should have competition in the production of money. I have long been a proponent. 7.83 pounds. China also announced a ban on financial firms transacting in Bitcoin. The government will treat Bitcoin not as a currency, but as a commodity, duh. And as such, individuals and companies are free to set up Bitcoin exchanges and transact in Bitcoin. The government warns, however, that they are on their own to try to move as much of that worthless yuan out of the country as they possibly can. Imagine that. The government will not take on the risks of individuals and corporations. Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Oh my God, Baidu no longer accepts Bitcoin. Holy moly, China bans Bitcoin? How will we survive? Shriek the mainstream media. Well, in fact, Baidu, the eBay of China, no longer accepts Bitcoin, but it was only ever one of Baidu's many subsidiaries which accepted Bitcoin, and that was just for one Samsung product for several weeks. And in those weeks, only 1.37 Bitcoin were ever sent to Baidu. Look here. This is their wallet. See that? 627. How indeed will we survive, Stacey? Yes, Max. Well, when this announcement came from China, of course, the price of Bitcoin did plummet quite a bit on the exchanges, and but it's now back up again. But I want to look at that headline for a moment. China bans financial companies from Bitcoin transactions. So the central bank said that the public, however, was free to transact in them. They just wouldn't allow the banks there to transact in them. This got a lot of attention, but at the same time, which went completely unnoticed, other than a Frederick August von Hayek scheme to denationalize money, Bitcoin's our first step in this direction, said Frank Schaffler, a member of the German Parliament's Finance Committee who has pushed for legal classification of Bitcoins. Bitcoin as a commodity, yes, that's true. That's what we've been saying all along. It's a precious number, just like uh, gold is a precious metal. And you have monetary metals, like gold, that are used as money and have over thousands of years. As we enter the next period of 